Hello and welcome to the structure learning chapter. This is section one, introduction. We had this COVID-19 problem with 12 variables and in the previous chapters we saw how to interpret a given Bayesian network that describes the relationship between these variables. Also in the parameter learning chapter we saw how to estimate the parameters for a given Bayesian network structure. The question here is how to learn or estimate the actual structure from data. And that is equivalent to, to asking how to factorize the joint probability distribution, namely how to find a PMAP or a minimal IMAP structure from data. This task is called structure learning. To recall, an IMAP is a DAG G such that IG is a subset of IP. So all the conditional independencies, the global conditional independencies imposed by G are a subset of uh, IP or they are basically included in the distribution. An IMAP always exists, for example a fully connected DAG. And a minimal IMAP is an IMAP that if we take one edge out then it's no longer an IMAP. So an IMAP Many of the IMAPs can be, in general, uh, redundant. By taking out some of the edges, then we can make them minimal. A minimal IMAP also always exists. Just take, for example, the fully connected DAG and remove edges until we reach the point that removing, removing one more will make it no longer an IMAP. Now, a PMAP was a DAG G such that it, it, it completely covered all of the conditional independencies in the joint distribution. So IP wouldn't have anything more. They are exactly matching. Now an I, a, a P map may not exist. One example was the X, XOR example. And kind of the best structure for us is the P map because it captures all conditional independencies IP. Now, back to our example, let's focus on a smaller case, just the COVID mask, not all the 12 variables, how to learn the structure. And we know like we can have three different structures. They can be completely independent. We can have an arrow from COVID to mask or the other way around. And we know that these two are basically having the same, uh, they belong to the same class, I equivalent class. Okay. so. One approach is to find from data the conditional independencies that the DAG must satisfy. And we mainly covered this in the representation chapter. These conditional independencies are the constraints because the graph should satisfy them. So if we have the table, then we can obtain P of C and M and also we can obtain P of C and P of M, so we can multiply them and see if these two match, okay? So if they match for all the cases, then we say that they're independent. However, here, for example, in this table, we see that they don't match. Two over nine is not the same as one over 12. So when they don't match, it means that C and M are actually dependent and the set of conditional independence is empty because we just have two variables. This is the only thing we can check. Okay, so the graph obviously is either of these two. Cannot have the case where they are standing alone, isolated. And the PDAC equivalence will be just the two with an undirected link connecting them. This approach is called constraint-based because it's based on the constraints. And you may say that, didn't we already cover this in the representation chapter? Well, let's see what we exactly did here. First, we found the conditional independencies from data. We haven't covered this before. Secondly, we found the structure from the constraints. But how did we exactly do that? Well, we just checked which of these three structures satisfy the constraint that we found from the table. Just imagine that we have a huge network with many number of variables. We cannot just check every single network and see if they satisfy the constraint or not. It will be very costly or infeasible. 
So we need to come up with an algorithm and that's the focus of our next sections. So th those are the challenges with this approach. Another approach is based on the idea that the true Bayesian network must maximize the likelihood. If the data was generated based on some Bayesian network, meaning that the underlying joint probability distribution was factorized according to the structure of that Bayesian network, then at least intuitively when we have sufficient number of instances, then we expect that the likelihood is maximized for that Bayesian network as well. So in this approach, we find the structure that maximizes the likelihood. How? Well, a Bayesian network is constructed from a structure and the parameters. In the parameter learning chapter, we saw how to maximize the likelihood of the parameters. And we saw that it was extremely simple. We just counted the number of for each node, the number of times that the node and its parents, the specific value of the parents, appear, and we divided it by the total number of times that the parents appear. So this will be the maximum likelihood estimate for a particular structure G. Now, if we want to find the structure G that maximizes the likelihood, it's equivalent to finding the structure G whose parameters theta MLE of G maximizes the likelihood. So max G, max theta of this whole likelihood term is of course equivalent to finding only the G whose likelihood is maximized under MLE. Okay, so we will do this. Here in our example, we Again, we need an algorithm to do this systematically, but just to give you the idea, we will calculate the likelihood for each of the three structures. So the first one, they are independent, and the likelihood of the CPDs, general CPDs, and this graph G, well, it's just this term here. So we have the parameters theta of C and theta of M. There's no conditional parameter, and we just count how many times they appear. Now, if we want to maximize this likelihood over the parameter theta, then we will just replace the MLE estimates. Okay, and this is what we get. So we just count in the data, for example, theta C, how many times COVID appeared. This is C1. So uh, divided by the total number that was in the table and so on with all the other parameters. So this is the number that we will get. Similarly, I can calculate the likelihood for the other networks. Here I have mass condition on COVID. So we'll have the CPD of M condition on C. And I can maximize these parameters using the MLE technique. And at the end, I will find the likelihood of this structure. Now note that this likelihood is greater than the previous one, than the case where mask and COVID are independent. So if I'm going to use the likelihood as my condition for choosing the structure, then I have to choose this one, okay, when the two are linked to each other. And it's not surprising to see that when I flip the link, then I will get the same final likelihood. So the structure that I was interested in that would maximize the likelihood appears to be either when mask is linked to COVID and COVID or COVID is linked to mask or the class PDAC, the equivalent, the I equivalent class, where there's just a link between them. Now, note that here likelihood was simply a score to measure the goodness of fit. One can use other scores, as we will see in the next uh, sections. So this approach is called score-based, not necessarily likelihood-based. It is called score-based and the idea here is to come up with some score and have an algorithm that would systematically look into the structure that will maximize the score. Okay, so overview of what we covered here. There were two main approaches to learn the structure. One was constraint-based, and this requires finding the conditional independencies from the data, and also an algorithm to find the structure from IP. 
The score based requires a score function such as the likelihood and also it requires an algorithm to find the structure that maximizes the score. Back to our roadmap, in the representation chapter, our goal was to find a Bayesian network that factorizes the joint probability distribution according to all of the conditional independencies in the data. And this was equivalent to the structure being a P map, if one exists, or a minimal I map. So the goal was really to find a P map or minimal I map or the class P DAG because some of the links could be uh, could take arbitrary directions from the data. But just note that what we did in the representation chapter was just conditions for checking whether a given network, one of these networks for example, they are a P map or not. We didn't discuss how to find one of them. So a systematic search for finding the Bayesian network from the data, we didn't really cover that. We may say that, well, we can just exhaustively look into all of these cases and uh, find the one that is a PMAP. Yes, but as we discussed, this is computationally costly and often infeasible. Here the goal is the same. We still want to find a PMAP, but we want to do that systematically. How? We will see that in the next videos.